Hello and welcome back to a new video. Sabu Yahya from VR Division. And today we're gonna keep working on our project, the fourth room. There is some 3D modeling we need to do, and that is some and that is adding details to the project we have. And I'd like to start with the kitchen, living room area. Already took a look at all my pictures, so we know what's up. And I hope you did too. So we will be adding some of these elements here. So if you take a look at this picture, for example, if you look at the closets, we have spaces in between them. We have, they are slightly above the floor and we also have the kitchen. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, maybe one thing you might notice that the plan here, it's here we have a wall or something, but in the visualization in the image we kind of don't so there is this part so i'm just gonna fix it because i like this more i want to see the edge of the closet so what i'm going to do is to select this wall go to edit poly click on four and move it for now here actually i'm going to move it just three centimeters back like there we go and as for this box if we take a look at the reference they don't share the same dimensions in a way but i'm going to ignore that and make them like share the dimensions i'm kind of happy with what what i have here in terms of divisions on these assets maybe those could use more but it's okay we don't really care about that so what i like to do is to take this make a copy okay and this copy is going to be just two centimeters and this one will be slightly less this one will be eight and we will select this one press alt a to align it with this one and you need to select the y axis so i'm going to deselect the z and the x and current objects we can set it to minimum the target object maximum and click ok and you can see that this aligned exactly here so again i'm gonna do that again so let's say this is just far from the object like so if you align it it will be on the top and we're doing that because once we add some chamfer and uh whatnot we're gonna see the edges and the spaces between them now i will convert this to edit poly and i will start detaching some of these meshes like so so click detach, isolate our selection again, all of it. Click on three, press Ctrl A. This will select the borders where we detach our meshes. We want these borders closed. So let's click on cap, okay? And let's do the same to these. Click on cap. And I'm going to show you a quick example now. So if you just add something like chamfer modifier, Let's ignore the smoothing groups for now. We're gonna fix this later, but look, the spaces between them. Let's just reduce the amount a little bit and we can increase the segments if needed. As you can see, we have these. However, what I also like to do is to make distance in between. And since all of these have like the exact same dimensions, I'm just going to select one of these meshes, press on D, Detach this as a clone, okay? Have my clone selected. I press zero on my keyboard to center the pivot so it's easier to move. And I will uh, do connect, then we'll do chamfer. And I will set that to like very close to the edge. So maybe 37.5, okay? And I will press control, hold polygon. So this will select everything i will deselect the middle area and i will press delete so this piece is little smaller than uh, the ones around it they can simply click on this face delete them and do another cap like so and now i can select this press shift move this sorry on the right press s snap it to the exact middle of this mesh okay let's make this as an instance and let's make 
eight duplicates or seven. Yeah, we needed seven, so we can delete that. So let's select the older mesh, which is this one, press delete, and this one, press delete. And now we have distance between these guys. And if we add chamfer, they will look even cooler. I can delete this edge in the middle, so I'm going just to select it, double click, press X, that's my shortcut again, and we're good. Let's do the same here. So click on this, this already got a shell modifier. So I'm sure there are many ways to achieve the same distance in between these meshes. Feel free to leave your favorite way in the comments. For some reason, when I'm recording and talking, my mind will stop working. So I'm just going to follow this little method I have. Something like this. You want like very small distance, basically. All right, now we added chamfer, we did this. You can select this, double click, press Ctrl. So the polygon is selected and press Ctrl I to invert our selection and we can delete this and I can select this border and instead of pressing on cap this time I can go to rapid tools and rapid Q cap so it would add this for me again clicking tree if cap we need to connect these two vertices because now we have an end gun so if you look at this I press U to switch to orthographic view. It's much easier to zoom in. So if you go to perspective and zoom in, it will clip, it will not be as easy. So orthographic is so much nicer. We have this face here. It has more than four polygons, sorry, four edges. And this makes this an end gun. And end guns, they're okay, but we like to avoid them. So one, two, three. So these are three edges here, right? Then four, five, and six. But what we want is four. That's why we connect these two, okay? And now you look at this face, you have four edges. This face got four edges as well. I can delete this if I don't want to. And I can select this, deselect this, press F5 to make sure that I am on the x-axis. I keep pressing space to lock my selection because that's my muscle memory. So if I unlock, I don't press space and I press shift and move things. It will move, it should work. But I'm just used to pressing space a lot. So here it sticks. We can do this. And let's do another. We want one more. By pressing space, you just avoid clicking on something else by mistake. So that's why I love selection lock toggle because I keep clicking on things by mistake. So here we want a unique object, not an instance because this part is smaller, but we can work on this part separately. So let's just delete that. I will isolate my selection and I will select element mode and I will select all of these. Deselect these two and click on delete this one. So let's do this, connect, chamfer, let's just do a very small value, like I guess it's fine. In life, nothing is perfect, so if there are gaps bigger or smaller, it's okay. Let's press Ctrl, select this, actually sorry, let's select this one and this one, hold Ctrl and select with the marquee tool. Press Ctrl A to invert your selection, delete, press 3, then Ctrl A and then Alt P to cap. And let's repeat the same process. Oh, it looks like I deleted uh, the other two we wanted by mistake. So it's okay. You can take this, move it all the way to here. Let's just make it unique. Actually, no need for this. It's just that face we detached this guy here. So add connect, then more connect, chamfer. All right, once you're happy with the result, Select the faces you want to keep, Ctrl I, delete. And in this case, we want to add the shell modifier. So let's do that. Type SH to find shell. And there you go. We have nice 
big gap in between these but not in between these however since these are instances we can select one press ctrl a press on r and we can scale as you can see on the x-axis so i think this is fine scale it like one percent nice so i want to do this i want to move this um here there we go you can imagine the same process on all other parts so we can select this press d to detach make sure it's as clone and select each of these edges connect oh just make sure that you click on the show dialog the settings there you go click chamfer increase the chamfer more so i think this is nice there you go press on four and select what we want to keep so we would invert our selection and we would delete this easy peasy and what we can simply do is add you guessed it a shell modifier and make a copy maybe move this before we make a copy like on the x-axis like 0.2 right then make a copy to the other side as an instance move it here and minus 0.2 so we have also this gap we can do the same here so instead of selecting all of these since this is um, an object an instance and we have many instances of the same object around if we go to the sub object mode so the element mode and move that around it will do the same for all the instances so we can move this as like 0.2 we have some sort of gap and we can do the same of course here 0.5 select this point five or even more if we need to the same for the ceiling we want to have some of that gap let's do the same here and here so i select edit poly modifier on top of my meshes if when i have multiple meshes selected and we can change them like so and collapse it if needed there you go now let's do some work on the kitchen and we can wrap up this episode so i will isolate my selection and I will go to the top view, I will select this nice kitchen, press Alt X to take a look. So here we have the uh, water stuff, here we have the oven, here we have the part where we have chairs, and here is the kitchen. So if you're like me, okay, I did not study architecture, I learned things by seeing and by googling a lot. There is this nice website called dimensions.com and it is extremely valuable. This is not paid, by the way. I learned about this website a couple of years ago, and I use it every time I want to make sure from my dimensions. And I want to keep using other blockers, thank you. I have a pro account, guys, but I'm not signed in. Yeah. So I'm gonna type kitchen here, and you will find kitchen cabinets, for example, and many other things, by the way. And from here, you can read about kitchens, you can learn about their dimensions, and you can also learn about why we do things the way we do. So for example, uh, let me show you. So categories, then layouts. Under layouts, you're going to learn a lot. So whether bathrooms, bedrooms, bake lines, anything you can think of. So we have under development stuff, cool. Where are the kitchens? There we go, kitchens. Check this out. We have U shape, L shape, gallery shape, and so on. And then when you click on a shape, one of these shapes, you can read more about this layout and the standards, the minimum of these, uh, like what is needed from here and here, uh, the distances, and so on. And this is so valuable, guys. This is really valuable. I love this. So you can read some questions and you can check more layouts and so on so yeah i hope you found this one useful as a resources site and the reason i come here for example maybe i want to know what is the standard height of the kitchen or what is the standard height of a window what are the standards for the bathroom and so on and here is a 
standard IKEA section-based cabinet. You can read the height, the width, the depth, and so on. And in our case, also, if we take a look at the plans from the reference, you can tell that the kitchen, the highest point of it, like reaches the window, which is like 90 centimeters. And that's my 25 minutes timer. And in the site, it says 91 centimeters. So this here is 90, so it should be good. What we can do is having this into multiple pieces. So I'm going to make another box. So I want one up to this point here, but can't do that, so let's do that like so. And I'm going to add edit poly on top. Select this, move it all the way here. And I'm just curious about the dimensions. Kitchens are some of my favorites. So 374, and I'd like to make that 300 and 76. So I'll just make another box, 376. Make it start here, then select this, press four, move it all the way here, delete. The other part of the kitchen, it will be like an open, uh, open from here because of the chairs, right? So let's do this, make another cabinet, and let's make this 162. Move it here and let's delete this. These two parts need to move here to kitchen and I will just start adding more details. So I'm going to add this part and I'm going to give it thickness of four or three for now. And I'm going to do the same here. Give it also a thickness of three. We can delete this and we can do the same in a way here, but First, I need to take a look at my kitchen pictures that I found from the video to do something like this. And I'm gonna stop the lesson here so it's not too long. In the next lesson, we're going to keep working on the kitchen. So I will stop working on the kitchen here so we can continue in the next lesson. If you found this useful, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And as always, I will see you in the next lesson. Take care.